Hi everyone, in this video I will demonstrate creating an elevation drawing in the Visio interface. So to do that, uh, select the project you want to work with here in the Project Explorer, and then double click the Visio file associated with that project to open it. Uh, you'll be prompted to check out the project if you haven't already. Go ahead and do that, and this will open up the Visio interface for this project. I'm going to click the Project Editor button to pull up that interface, and then I'm going to collapse this list. Um, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut for that. It's Shift Control uh, on the up arrow. Um, you can also get to those this way. Expand all, collapse all. And I'm going to expand the mechanical room here, the non-packaged items, and this is a list of all the products here. And you can just select what you want to drag over to the page and drag it. So I've selected this rack, and I'm going to left mouse click now and just drag it over. And what you'll see here is an elevation shape. I'm going to go ahead and drag a few more over, and then I'll zoom in and talk about them. Let's just scroll down in the list here. I'm going to pull these two devices over, drop those about right here. And we'll go ahead and zoom in. There we go. I'll move this one down a little bit, zoom in a little bit more, and then we'll talk about these shapes. So the shapes that drop on an elevation page come from the following stencil. So if you click the Shapes tab, there's an Elevation Shape stencil here. And here you can see that there are looks for all different types of equipment uh, in this list, including the equipment rack that you see over on the page. A lot of the categories that are inside of SI are, have a shape that are automatically pre-assigned to them, like uh, amplifiers and receivers and uh, things like that. But if you happen to have a category where uh, a particular style of shape is not selected, or a, uh, like a disc player, for instance, or a disc changer, what will drop is a, a plain elevation shape, or as it's called over here, elevation plane. It'll just be a white box, uh, but it will still be to scale. And that's the most important thing about these shapes to understand, is that they are being scaled based on the dimensions dimensions that you've entered for the product. So if we double click a product like this one and take a look at the specifications tab, you'll see that there's information here like height, width, and depth. In this case, the height and width are being used to uh, dictate the size of this shape. So that's an important feature too of this page. You can't just resize these shapes by dragging a corner, say, and then resizing them like you could on, say, a, a line page where we're using uh, JPEG images. So if I zoom out here, um, what I'll point out is if this rack is too small for this page, if you wanted to fill out more, what you'll have to do is change your drawing scale. And the way to do that in Visio is here we are on the Elevation View tab. If you right click, go to Page Setup, and then go to Drawing Scale, here you can change the drawing scale. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave these this size for now, though, and then talk a little bit more about uh, the shapes themselves here. Notice that we print the manufacturer name, the model number, as well as the component ID on the shapes. And you may have also noticed that both of these shapes have feet on them. And that's because neither one of these are marked as rack mounted. Now that is a global setting that you can set for uh, particular products if they always go in a rack. If you double click this, I'll show you the setting here on the specifications. You can check this rack mounted so that it, they'll drop automatically uh, in Visio without the feed on them. Uh, but you can always change it on the fly as well. Um, you can right click to get to it, or uh, I'm gonna use the shape data window because I'm going to change both of these shapes at the same time. And if you haven't turned on your shape data window yet, we do recommend doing that. It's, it's a quite useful window. And just to get there, go to View, Task Panes, Shape Data. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select this shape, hold Control down, select the other one, and then pull out the shape data window here. And you can see there are quite a few uh, properties associated with these elevation shapes. Like here's the color of the screws and the feet, color of uh, rack ears. Uh, what rack ears, you might ask? Well, let me show you. Here, the mount type you can see is set to shelf mounted. That's why there's feet on these. But if you mark it as rack mounted and the device isn't 19 inches wide, this is what will happen. We'll add rack ears to those. Uh, just the shapes, we don't actually add the product to your bill of materials uh, to represent that there are rack ears on these shapes and then they'll be able to snap those over here into the rack. And uh, so again, if you wanted to change the color of those here, of course you could do that too. But now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and just drag these over and snap them into the rack. And you can see that they connect in the bottom left-hand corner of each one of these shapes. And that's how you can go about building a rack elevation uh, inside of SI. I'll zoom out here for a second. And I'm going to show you another uh, stencil that's useful for elevation pages, and that's cabinet tools. 
If you expand this list here, you can see there's like cabinet bottoms, cabinet tops, and these can be dragged over uh, to a page if you want to represent, uh, you know, existing cabinetry that you're going to be uh, integrating equipment to. Uh, we have a lot of these shapes in here, and these are to scale, but they are not linked to your catalog. So if you do pull over, say, a cabinet bottom, um, it will be to scale, which of course you can adjust if you right-click this. You can adjust the height, width, and kick uh, to resize that. But it will be to scale, uh, but notice I wasn't prompted to pick anything from my catalog. It's not being added to the bill of materials. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you what a finished elevation page looks like. This is an example of a finished elevation page. I'm going to change the view here to turn off the uh, grid here. It's a little cleaner looking. As you can see, there's a couple different views here. Um, there's a TV over here. This is a screen showing the speakers behind it. Here's a you know, subwoofer. And down here is a rack. And I'll go ahead and zoom in. This rack happens to be showing a side view as well. And that's what a finished elevation drawing can look like inside of SI.